Today we will discuss the important topics in physiology. It is very important that while you are studying for your first prof examination, you should go through the basic textbook which is GEMAUG. Now that is possible only during the first year of your MEBS. Now if you are an intern or a post intern or preparing for your entrance, it is difficult to go back to the basic textbook and read physiology from there. So it is important to go have a topic wise approach for physiology. The most important unit for PG preparation on physiology is neurophysio. So what all we have to focus in neurophysio? The first important topic is nerve muscle physiology. Almost in all entrance exam, one or the other you have sometimes more than one question from your nerve muscle physiology. In nerve muscle physiology, you have to pay special attention to muscle spindle, Golgi tendon organs, the graphs of length tension relationship, how passive tension, active tension behaves, the basic diagrams because image based questions are coming up, the basic diagrams of sarcomere, the various components of the sarcomere, what are the proteins which are constituting the Z line, the M line, the A subunit and the I subunit that is very very important. Also you may get some calculation based questions in neurophysiology. It is very important to focus on the normal sleep cycle, the EEG patterns in neurophysiology. Many image based questions are possible in this topic. It is very important to focus on various methods of memory preservation and establishment. The concept of long term potentiation, what is summation, what is disinhibition, all are very very important. Along with this, it needs to be supplemented with the knowledge of autonomic nervous system. The particular application of autonomic nervous system comes in your pharmacology where it is very important to understand the impact of various receptors as regard to the various changes in the vitals in blood pressure and heart rate and how the various drugs can influence the alpha, beta receptors and the cholinergic receptors to get an applied and holistic view of the various pharmacological drugs. From neurophysio, the second unit you should focus on is the cardiac physiology. Now cardiac physiology is beautifully described in Guyton. It is one textbook which is the ideal textbook to read cardiac physiology but in Guyton the cardiac physiology is very very lengthy. So if you are an intern, I would not advocate you to read Guyton. It should be just used as a reference book. But if you are a first year MBA student, definitely and you are interested in cardiac physiology and you want to read it in depth, then the best book is Guyton. Because the knowledge about the various changes in cardiac cycle, the various changes in the PV loop is best given in Guyton. As far as PG preparation is concerned, the knowledge about the calculation portion of cardiac output, how the CT range changes, the ECG changes corresponding with the cardiac cycle and the JVP changes with the corresponding cardiac cycle is very important because these three graphs can produce many questions which are interlinked that at a particular point in cardiac cycle with a corresponding ECG with a corresponding phonocodiogram recording you can get a potential question that what will be the wave produced in JVP at a particular instant. So you have to keep all these four things in parallel the JVP recordings, the ECG recordings the corresponding cardiac cycle pressure curve along with that if possible the relationship of S1 and S2 because the murmurs in the characteristic phase of cardiac cycle can be easily correlated using this technique and you get many questions apply from applied physiology either in part of medicine or as a part of pediatrics on the basis of murmurs whether it is a diastolic murmur, whether it is a systolic murmur, whether it is a crescendo or a decrescendo murmur. So it is very important. The knowledge of the cardiac cycle is very important. Apart from that, you can get questions on PV loop where you can get various scenarios. Ki how does it is going to change in aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation? How is it going to affect it in mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis? So all these scenarios you should be well versed with. Coming to the next unit. The next unit is your respiratory physiology. Respiratory physiology, you have to be very well versed with the zones of pulmonary function. 
Even the simple spirometry can produce good equations. Your knowledge about FEV1, FPC, the curves of MEFR, all are very important because these are all potential questions. And one trick for physiology questions is that if it involves a calculation, whether it's a simple concept of resistance in parallel, if your calculation is becoming too cumbersome, that is a hint that you are going wrong. Most questions which have been asked in the examination till now, they generally have very simple calculations. So whenever, like we recently got a question on what is the amount of oxygen which is being carried for a given amount of hemoglobin. So it is a simple multiplication question. But if your answer, if your calculation is getting complex, then something is going wrong. Apart from this, we need to focus on renal physiology. You need to have very clear concepts about clearance and how the TFP ratio, how does the tubular fluid versus plasma fluid ratio changes for various substances including electrolytes, including sugar amino acids, including your urea and their relationship with standard parameters like pH, creatinine because they are used in the calculation of either renal plasma flow or used in the calculation of clearance. So those can be the calculative question. Apart from that, you can get most likely questions based on individual scenarios when you, where you are given an ABG. So that is more of an applied medicine question, but the knowledge of how the pulmonary function and renal function are balanced in various situations of alkalosis and acidosis is very important. So it is up to you to cover this portion while you are doing physiology or you can cover this portion while you are doing your medicine. In totality, this is a concept based subject. What I would suggest is, if you are preparing an internship, you should do physiology early in your phase of internship. Because it is concept based, you will have a greater memory and better understanding if you give a little time to it and have good concepts. And you don't need to revise these concepts in the end, if you have a good understanding of the topic. You can even skip some of the topics in physiology because these are conceptual things. Mostly some numericals will come which will have easy calculations. But this is one subject which should not be done in a state of panic. Because then you will tend to do most things wrong. It is mostly understanding based. And most questions are coming from only targeted topics. That is generally your neurophysiology or cardiac physiology or respiratory or renal physiology. These are the main four units which you should focus.